My braid is flashing first. Jason and I were really good buddies from college. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. Um, and we are here today to talk about the Golden Bolt recap. Obviously, as you can see, I don't have Witch Doctor or Hypershock or any of the teams that were in the Golden Bolt recap because they are all super busy working on their robots, I'm sure, for the new season. Um, but I do have a special guest today, and you, you can introduce yourself, Nick. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick Sacco. I've been a mega fan of BattleBots since the Comedy Central days. Um, I jumped at the opportunity to join Christine whenever she needed somebody to come in and talk bots with her. I was a builder at UC San Diego, and I promise you, you never heard about our bot that we built at UCSD. It was Grandmaster Thrash. We had it about 80% done, and then Comedy Central canceled the show. So you can see in my background here, this was us when uh, we didn't know how to buy clothes that fit us because it was the early 2000s. And we built Grandmaster Thrash, was a, which was a very hazard-esque bot. Um, it was pretty awesome. It fully functioned. It didn't have any armor on it. But then, like I said, Comedy Central ended the show. So I can't credit myself. I could say I'm a builder. But honestly, I'm just a mega, mega fan of BattleBots. And I am so excited to be here today talking with Christine about uh, what we saw <laughs> What we saw last week, it was amazing. I'm yes, excited. Exactly. Um, so we we've definitely had like a week to reflect on this this golden bolt tournament. Um, I mean, it was it was amazing. There was not a match that I think that I was disappointed by. So we'll we'll kick it right off from the beginning. Um with the match that I was the most conflicted on. Um, which is Ribot versus Endgame, because I truly could not like make myself decide who I thought was going to win that match. Now, I was confident that whoever won that match was going to end up in the final, but I didn't know for sure who it would be. Um, what I thought was interesting watching that match was, of course, in the beginning, Endgame decided to knock their own forks off, which was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen in BattleBots. Um, and, you know, Ribot ended up going with the horizontal configuration. Maybe not the best choice looking at it in hindsight. Um, you know, I, I really thought Ribot could pull it out because they had won the last time that the two of them fought. And, you know, but both have obviously improved since then. And Endgame just thrashed them. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was the, the, the fork, like, joke that they did. And it was, was it a joke? I think it was, right? They put the forks on there intending to knock them off, right? And so that was amazing. I was watching it with four or five of my friends in my living room. And when that happened, all of us lost our minds with excitement. Uh, I mean, you got to say that, I mean, Ribot, Knowing that Endgame has such a strong fork game, Ribot, obviously, that's why they would choose the horizontal. They needed to take out the forks. But that was just some, that was some mind chess going on there with those guys. And I loved it. I mean, we, like I said, we were losing our minds in the living room of my house here watching it. And I got to say, like, I've bet against Ribot so many times. And I'm always like, Ribot can't win. Ribot can't win. And I've taught myself now. Never bet against Ribot. They've always impressed me every chance they've gotten. And so I'm, I'm like, I can't pick. It's a 50-50 for me. And so, I mean, I, I would have been excited for the outcome for each team. Like you said, Christine, I would have – I thought whoever wins this fight could easily go all the way to the championship because Ribot always impresses even when I underestimate them. They really do. And, I mean, it's – you know, sometimes when I when I interview teams, I, like – you know, I'm just good at, at reading like a vibe. And when I had talked to the Ribot team um, during the, the recap that I did with them of the, the previous bracket, that they, they just, there seemed to be some kind of, you know, where they're maybe alluding to something happening. And I, I was like, oh man, it, it sounds like maybe they went all the way in this one. And I was really excited because I love that team so much. And then that happened and I'm just like, ah, oh. and you know, but after watching that match, I will never 
ever again underestimate Endgame um, <laughs> because you know I thought after they lost to Minotaur I'm like eh, you know maybe maybe they have a, a little bit of weakness there but I mean I just think Minotaur has them figured out <laughs> yeah yeah and I'm gonna say I detected it on your show too when I saw David talking about how they did I saw the look on his face I was like something interesting happened maybe they won the whole thing because I always underestimate them and uh, and so I detected it too, Christine. I was like, I think they might have won the whole thing. So I I felt that something amazing happened, and it really was amazing. That fight was just the the the, the prongs of the, the forks was just was that was that was the showmanship that I love. That's what I love about how BattleBots just gets better and better with the showmanship that the teams have. So good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um. So then we had Hypershock versus Scorpios, um, which, so I, like, I don't know how many times Will Bales can replicate the original meme of him being surprised that he knocked a robot out of the arena. Um, I mean, I wasn't surprised that they won because, um, I mean, I love Scorpios. Like, I, I love Zach and Diana so much. They're two of the most fun people to talk to. But Will Bales was on a mission, as I have said. And I felt very strongly that for at least the first match of that Golden Bolt tournament, he was going to continue that mission. Um, now, I didn't think that it would be such a quick match. I thought that it would be very back and forth, probably go the full three minutes, because Scorpios is a very durable robot. But when you knock a robot out of the arena, then then that's it. There's not much else you can do. And then Will Bales is just, you know, like, oh, oh, am I going to get in trouble for doing that? Yeah. Twice in one event, basically. The guy, like, what you're not supposed to be doing anymore is utaing people. And he did it twice. Oops. But that just plays right into his personality so well. I mean, who knows if he was really trying to do it. But gosh, I mean, it's so funny to watch his reactions. And if just it just he's he's just such a great part of the sport and no wonder they made him the the host of the the remars event right he's got charisma out the door and then it's it's great and you know i was blown away because you know scorpios can stay it can hang in the fight against just about anybody they got a puncher's chance against anybody these days and uh but again hypershock was on a just on such a tear it was amazing i mean they, that was their fifth straight win at that point, right? I think they won four in the in the bounty in the the the, the slugfest, and then they won five. And who's not to believe that that they're going to just go all the way to the end at this point? And uh, there's more points that that Christian bring, or that uh, Will brings up a little bit later on about one factor that played in is he never got touched in any of his fights so far. He hadn't been touched one bit, and there we go again with another fight against now Scorpios, where not a single scratch on his bot after that, you know, and so. I mean, it seems like they got the formula down. They know exactly what they're what it's going to take to be a just absolute mean machine out there. And I can't wait to see what more they do, which is going to be in later fights and, of course, now future seasons. Yes, um, it was it was a short fight, but it was definitely a very exciting one. Um, you know, made for made for some fun stuff there. Uh, but then, you know, from there we get the match that everybody wanted to see in the round of 32 but didn't happen i'm sure that the the schedule makers were like licking their chops when when that happened so that they could make this match actually take place um was glitch versus witch doctor so the interesting things for that match with me is that that was the best for me that i that glitch drove during the whole slugfest i mean they they were driving much better um Witch Doctor obviously spent a lot of time in the beginning avoiding them because they wanted to avoid the weapon, which, to be perfectly honest, after what they did to Rotator, I don't blame Mike at all. Like, not even a little bit. Um, I mean, you obviously have to engage. That's part of the game. But you also have to be smart and not do something that you know could immediately, in one hit, take your bot out. You have to be very strategic about it. Um, and he waited for a window and as soon as he got that window of opportunity he just took advantage of it and it did not take very long after that point for witch doctor to to get the win yeah uh one thing i was lucky to read before we did the filming here is uh glitch's builder blog actually goes into some details that were quite interesting about that fight 
Um, but they were told by the judges, better engage. They were circling around each other. So they did end up putting pressure on Mike or and or Glitch to go in on each other. And uh, and that's often when somebody makes a misstep, when they get told they got to engage, got to engage, and they just kind of dive in there and get hit by Glitch's amazing weapon. And so luckily when uh, when when Witch Doctor was told and they were both told that they got to engage each other, it didn't result in that horrible outcome that, that you fell all the other opponents before the glitch went against. So luckily, and not, not so luckily, but thankfully, Mike uh, was able to just use his driving skills despite being told to go in. And he did he did the Mike lately thing, which is just to uh, wait until he gets the chance to clip them where, where it counts. And uh, there was actually more in the glitch builder blog uh, about a TV timeout that happened. It's something that, you know, that as viewers, thanks to like the superb editing of the show, um, as viewers, we didn't notice, but God, the, the Glitch Builder blog described a TV timeout that happened. When they were facing the screws near the end, They were. it was thought that maybe they were stuck and maybe they had a stick problem happening. And so they they went in, and I interpreted it correctly. They went. They were stuck over there, and there was questions about whether they were going to get a chance at an, at the, to get unstuck. And so which doctor was there waiting? And then when it was debated whether they should, then I think a countdown kind of began. And then Witch Doctor, having, you know, kind of learned a lesson from the Hydra fight, said, all right, well, we're going to go in then. And they went in and, and clobbered, uh, clobbered Glitch again. And it turned out that, um, <clears throat> you know, some of the fans at the, at the event were disappointed with that. And you didn't get to detect that on TV. And then you get to see the reaction of Andrea and Mike as they hit glitch, they're like, what? And then you can see that they feel like kind of a, a feeling of, what did we do? We didn't do anything. We're sorry, but we're not, you know? And it turns out that glitch went through and described it. And they were, of course, very cordial. If you want to say in sportsman, I can say we really were stuck on some debris. We were not stuck in the arena. We were stuck on a screw. And it was this. And it, so it's the same kind of drive issues they were having where it wasn't really a drive issue. It was just debris that got stuck under glitch. They were stuck near the edge. Thus, the question of are they stuck on the arena and should they get an unstuck chance? And that's when, um, with some confusion, which doctor went in and let him have it. And so uh, it was a wonderful fight. Though. I mean, everybody knows now to be scared out of their wits about what Glitch could do to you. But then, of course, which doctor can do some pretty nasty things as well, as we saw. It was great. And, um, you know, that kind of brings the point of unstucks, right? And unstucks and, and debris issues and what we're going to see in future seasons and it, it 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 bared itself out again in this fight and i think in the future seasons we're going to see some more uh awesome things happening with the changes and rules and stuff so yeah 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 absolutely <coughs> um so we went from a match that was supposed to happen before and you know now finally happened to a rematch of a very infamous fight between Tantrum and Tombstone, whereas in the previous fight, um, Tantrum got their fist cut off and and you know flew into the side of the battle box. Um, just an image that everybody remembers. But we're talking about obviously a very different Tantrum and a very different Tombstone at this point. Mm -hmm. so that was my uh, first memory of Tantrum. I'm mean, literally saying in joking terms. Uh, Tantrum literally left an impression uh, thanks to that fight, you know, the Tombstone fight originally because of what happened there. And so I was like, who is this Tantrum bot? And I've always remembered them since and seen now their progression and how much they've grown since then. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, again, like I thought maybe this match would would go on longer. There would be more back and forth than what there was. Um, but I mean, Tantrum's obviously very durable and you know the issue tends to be with Tombstone that something breaks or something you know gets knocked off or whatever and then they essentially vibrate themselves to death which is you know kind of what happened there was a piece of the robot that came off and then it just was kind of out of control um and, and couldn't really do anything more at that point um very unfortunate um you know we obviously we can talk about that later too but i mean like that 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 fight ended the way that it did and then ray is unfortunately not going to be able to come back for the next season um but the important thing is is that he'll have a chance to both you know heal up personally and also work on the robot some more and hopefully come back and just be like epic level of tombstone that that we you know we've known in the past um so yeah in interesting fight for sure 
Yeah, I mean, again, the durability of Tantrum comes in, and you saw uh, Tantrum get, they, you know, stay, they stayed patient after they got hit that first time. And, you know, Dylan, the driver, is really amazing. I was like, well, what are they going to do without Aaron Hall as the driver now? Well, Dylan, of course, as we saw, is an amazing driver for Tantrum. And I was, again, impressed with their durability after they got hit pretty hard by Tantrum there. And I noticed that Tantrum didn't look like they were that damaged, but they did lose one of their little fists on the self-riding mechanism. And uh, I do love the, 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 the upgrade to the self-riding mechanism with the little fists. And to see one of them cut off by, uh, by, by Tombstone was pretty awesome. And uh, it was, it was uh, what, what did we say here? Chris Rose had something great to say there. Uh, it says uh, from Tantrum, he says, we don't shine shoes anymore, which is a, a good fellas reference. And uh, so I thought that was awesome by Chris Rose to make a good fellas reference and how much tantrum has reached the top echelon of battle bots as shown by this fight. So yeah, it was great. Um, and I hope that Ray recovers well from what is, but from his injury, that's going to stop him from fighting in, in season eight, but he'll come back strong. I mean, the guy loves the sport more than anybody else I would say. And so I can't wait to see what he comes back with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was the first round. Um, we moved on to the second round, which was honestly like two just really, really amazing fights. Um, the first one was Hypershock versus Witch Doctor. And I was like so thrilled to see Technical T-Rex out there. Love it so much. Um, you know, anybody that knows me lo like knows that I love Pokemon um and the builders that appreciate pokemon get a little bit of extra special love for me for that um so um basically it was it was just an interesting match because at first they were both just driving around in circles chasing each other which was a little bit amusing um hypershock got those first couple of hits and then the next thing you know hypershock is flipped over and then Witch Doctor kind of started to take over the match there. Mm -hmm. um, Hypershock came back a bit for a while, and then they got flipped over again. And it just, it, it, it broke my heart because yeah. they had not had those type of errors happening previously. But I mean, to Will's credit, to kind of make that speech in the end and talk about, you know, like giving props to Witch Doctor and hey, they, they fought a good match, like, that just really, I think, epitomizes the kind of person that Will Bales is within the sport. Like, he's amazing. Um, and just everything about that match, I, I really loved. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was, it was, it's sad and great to see such good friends be put up against each other, you know, and to see that somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. I mean, uh, it, it was, it was a fantastic fight. It was all the action everybody should love about BattleBots. And again, like I was alluding to earlier, this is the first time you saw uh, Hypershock take really any damage in the whole tournament. I mean, even when they fought against Mad Catter and got flipped over earlier in this uh, champion series, uh, they still were able to avoid any true damage and get right back into that fight. And so this time you saw the damage happening and it was like, oh, could this be the end? But then they, they still came around and made it a close fight. It was really, um, it was amazing. And I got to say, I love... Farouk's intro for this one so much as well. Uh, that he used the Lizzo line, uh, took a DNA test, turns out she's 100% that witch. And I'm cracking up about it. And so uh, there's just so much to love about it. I mean, the tire getting stuck in the top of Witch Doctor. Again, my friends and I here at in the living room of my house, we were just, our jaws were on the floor. We're like, is this really how this is going to end? Is this, I mean, now I guess by the rules, my question is, would that be considered um, a tangling? If it was done intentionally, would that be considered a tangling device, right? It got me thinking, in the future, could a robot have like a side arm on it that would dangle a tire behind a spinner to get jammed down in there and then, uh, and then negate or, or disable a bot spinner in the future? And I think that might count against the rules as a tangling device. But I was like, this this could be the, the future of, of BattleBots. Uh, uh, a tire on a string getting stuck behind the spinner to disable some of these most powerful verts. So I, I'm pretty sure that if it was intentional, <laughs> that would probably not be allowed. Yeah. But how perfectly horrible was that for Witch Doctor to see that happening and thinking, there's just no way they can get that out of there. It's not coming out. The weapon can only go in one direction. There's no reverse on it. Why would there be? And so, of course, um, there's, 
there's just there's there's just no I was like this could this is gonna be the end of Witch Doctor right here because of a fluke tire jam incident and then it came back out and then it was back on and the fight became just that brawl that that destructive brawl we all love so that was again such an awesome fight I loved it. Yeah, and what was really funny about that fight is, so, you know, obviously, and, and I don't blame people um, looking at what Hypershock had done in the Gigabyte bracket, um, thinking that they were going to go all the way, you know, because they were on such a, such a, a good run. Um, but the funny thing about that is, is that after that first episode, the comparison that I made to Hypershock was looking at the regular season and looking at how... Sawblaze was for the most part, barring one match against Endgame, on an absolute tear where like Jameson was on a mission, he was tearing through everyone. Yes. And then he got to Witch Doctor and lost. Yes. And so after that hypershock match, I was like, hmm. And so when I saw this matchup, then I was like, I wonder. Mm-hmm. And so, something very similar happened and I don't know what it is about Witch Doctor um, but you know they, they've they done that to two different robots who were really on a roll at this point and you know credit to them for mm-hmm. being able to do that yeah I mean that fight against Sawblades I mean everybody knows Jameson Go is one of the best drivers but then so is Micah Lately and of course so is Will Fails and now you're seeing <laughs> this whole tournament was full of some of the best drivers in the sport but you saw what Mike Delately was able to do to Sawblaze, and that blew my mind, the driving skill that he used against them. And so, again, with how great of a driver Will Bales is, I just don't – I think any day of the week, Mike Delately can beat anybody, and then we'll see what happens a little bit later, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the next match was Tantrum versus Endgame, and um, – and Tantrum definitely gave Endgame their biggest challenge. I mean, even Endgame said that afterwards that they were they were pretty beat up after that fight because Tantrum's kind of a little bit of a tank. But the big battle for Tantrum in that match was that they just couldn't get their weapon into Endgame because from a design perspective, it, it just wasn't working for them. Um, and you know, for for me, this was a big callback to the uppercut and glitch fight, where uppercut was you know behind glitch and trying to hit them, and they just couldn't because design. So yeah. it d- does it, There's not much you can do in that situation except try and innovate. And unfortunately, like Endgame just ultimately got the better of them. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot, lots of love about both bots in this fight. I mean, like. I was actually impressed with the pulverizer work from the ta- uh, the tantrum team. They landed a couple of good ones that all you know kind of had a chance to impact the fight, which is you know you don't see that enough. So I was pretty proud of them. I was like, oh, pulverizer's coming in. This is good. This is good. And then you know I saw the self right by tantrum, and I, I'm just always impressed by how quickly they get back on their feet. But then you saw belt fall off when you saw them uh, self right. I was like, oh, this is. I see where this is going now. And yeah, just to see how kind of sad it was that Tantrum just couldn't get the reach to get the purchase or get any anything on Endgame. And it was that point when when you, you just realized, I just, I don't see how this could work out. You know, I mean, unless somehow Tantrum get on the sides, but it's just, Endgame is, is such, they're so well driven too. They're just absolutely top-notch driving. And, you know, if you're going to talk about getting onto the sides of this bot and that bot, you're not going to do it. You know, you're not going to get to Endgame sides. You know, it's just, it, you're going to have to face them in the front. And, you know, you, it, it, as good as Tantrum is, there's just no way they're going to get around the side to get any bite with that weapon. And, and that was when it was clear. Yeah, Endgame is going to take this one. So sad to see Tantrum has earned their way into my top favorite bots. But, you know, they can't always win, you know. So, and they'll be back. So I'm excited. They, they will be back. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that set up the Endgame versus, versus Witch Doctor final, which, like I said, this is relatively what I expected because, yeah. you know, I, I expected Witch Doctor to be there and I wasn't sure whether it was going to be Endgame or Ribot, but once Endgame beat Ribot, I was like, okay, well, I see where this is going. Um, you know, the, the thing for me was, is that I, I did expect Witch Doctor to win the whole thing. And I think a lot of that was influenced by the fact that 
I know that, you know, they've had so many tournaments where they have gotten all the way to the end and then lost. And so I was like, it can't happen a third time. They, it's they are just so motivated. <laughs> like it has to happen this time. Yeah. It just has to happen. And, you know, they did have the upper hand initially. I mean, they took mm -hmm. a huge chunk off of end game. Like yeah. I was like, okay, it's, it's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. And yeah. then like, they got to a point where they were, you know, face to face with Endgame and Endgame just pushed them back hard yeah. into the side of the box. And that's where things turned. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I have, I have right there that it's like, is that pushing power by Endgame? Actually, it's Forks. Their Forks got under Witch Doctor and they had four, they had all their wheels on the ground and their full power, Witch Doctor only had two. That gave them the pushing power to go do that devastating hit that really turned the tide of the fight for Endgame. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen that move a lot from a lot of teams. <laughs> the, although, I mean, the first thing that I thought of when that happened, obviously not the same result, but I thought of Cobalt driving Ghost Raptor into the side of the box. And I was like, no, Witch Doctor's not going to get Ghost Raptor. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't do it. No. <laughs> it didn't happen. But yeah, it didn't it was, happen. It didn't clearly happen. Clearly, there was some pretty major damage done in there. But gosh, that was, yeah. Nothing, I don't know if anything can ever rival what Cobalt did to, to Ghost Raptor. But, uh, but that, was, that was a pretty devastating hit right there. And that was when, you know, I, I've got my notes here. My heart sank at that point. I was like, ah. Because, you know, I love the Endgame guys. They're great. But I, I'm always pulling for Witch Doctor. And they're one of my... Maybe my favorite bot. And um and, and when I saw that hit from Endgame jamming him up in that short corner over there and sending him into the air, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh this is this is now not going in their favor. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that I mean I was I also rewatched this last night knowing that there were some doubts um about whether Minotaur was coming back. And um and so I'm like, please let there be a chance for Minotaur to come back. And because, I mean, it, it seems like that might be the only kryptonite for Endgame anymore, you know. And, I mean, I guess Ribot beat him a long time ago. And, um, but I just, the way they fought in these fights in this tournament, was just they were just devastating. Absolutely devastating Endgame was. I, I mean, uh, you know, obviously people have made that comparison before, but, like, they're very reminiscent of Bite Force, um, you know, yeah. very, very similar um, and just, you know, powerful as well. I mean, that, mm -hmm. ju that just shows. I mean, I, I don't think that they're quite as good as Bite Force, personally. I'm still hoping against hope that at some point Bite Force comes back and we can actually mm -hmm. verify yeah. <laughs> um, what, that, what that looks like. But, you mm -hmm. know... Still, like they're they're definitely amazing, um, definitely well deserved win um, mm -hmm. for them. I mean, they just really dominated that that Golden Bolt tournament. Yeah, this was and this was you know, saying gives credit. I mean, it's all of it. They won the championship, but I mean, like that was the most damage I've ever seen anybody do to Witch Doctor. I, I remember seeing Minotaur rip some wheels off, and, and but I mean, to see their their armor, their top armor, just can open it up at the end of the fight it was just like wow end game really is um the the cream of the crop i mean it, it, only one bot was able to get them and it was also one of the best bots with being minotaur and so and it, you know it, it was just it was an amazing fight and all credit to end game that was really fantastic and they their driving was amazing and again michael lately is one of the best drivers out there and and end game was still able to pull it off so just fantastic battle bots action Yes, it. it was I a very, it. very exciting tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and and speaking of like the other exciting things that weren't necessarily part of the tournament, but also on, on that episode was the the final year end awards that people have yeah. been asking about for a while. Um, you know, really exciting. Rookie of the year, you know, not surprisingly went both to Glitch and Riptide, who mm -hmm. both very deserving. I mean, they both had amazing years, um, you know, for sure. And then mm -hmm. most destructive, which I am certain was very influenced by what happened in the Slugfest. Um, what the Hyper fight, that gigabyte fight. I'm just, I still cry laughing thinking about. I love, I, I, I love Gigabyte, love John Malabnik, but man, seeing that happen was just the most, that was incredible destruction. So heck yeah, they deserve most destructive. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and then best design, not surprisingly, went to Aaron Hill for Blip. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing robot. 
Um, And then the Founders Award went to Jameson Go, who, you know, absolutely is very much a great ambassador for the sport. Um, I mean, I've had him on the show. Obviously, like, I love Saw Blaze. Jameson's awesome. So, you know, very well-deserved also. Yeah, I want to get my little note here. I love Jameson. I completely agree. If anybody's listening who makes this decision next year, I think John Maladnik deserves consideration for next year's Founders Award. The things that guy does to make sure all the best boss are in the tournament. Love it. And so congratulations to all those builders. And Jameson, I want to say, I love Saw Blaze. It's a question every year of do I love Witch Doctor more or do I love Saw Blaze more? And if, fight by fight, I'm always teetering. So I'm so happy to see Jameson getting his his due respect for how much he does for Battle Boss. The guy's amazing. Yes, absolutely. Um, and a force in the NHRL at Norwalk as well. So, um, it's, yeah. It's funny yeah. to see him in different colored t-shirts. I saw him wearing a, because uh, I haven't been to NHRL, I saw him in a blue shirt. I was like, that looks like Jameson Go, but he's in a blue shirt. I'm like, oh, wait, this is a different event. This isn't his Saw Blaze uh, team uniform. So, I know that guy's out there kicking a lot of butts in the other events too. So, I mean, I, I got to get to some of these NHRL events somehow. So Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. So very exciting stuff there. Um, also, what is exciting, as many fans may know, certainly by this point, the ticket sales for the next season of BattleBots are going on and tickets are going fast, I am sure. So if you want to go to Vegas and you want to see BattleBots live, please make sure that you get tickets. Um, you know, I kind of, uh, I know that I had talked to, to Nick a little about, bit about this before because Behind the Boss just did a really big show with Greg Munson, which was absolutely fantastic. And Greg shared a lot of really great information. Um, you know, one big part of that regarding the tickets and regarding the live event um, that I think is important. I mean, obviously it was said on that show, but I think it's still important to note um, because there's a lot of fans upset about like the vaccination requirements as there is for the live event. Um, It's important for everybody to know that that is not battle boss decision to make. There are a lot of unions and, and the TV folks and stuff like that, that have guidelines that have to be followed and, you know, the battle boss is doing their best to try and see what they can do within that, that guideline structure. Um, but that's, that's what it is. I mean, you know, Greg made a really good point, um, you know, that I think is, is, you know, good to keep in mind that, when they did this with the, you know, with the guidelines in place and having everybody, you know, wearing masks and stuff like that last year, nobody got sick. And at the Remars event, they kind of relaxed some things and a bunch of people got sick. So mm-hmm. ultimately we want everybody to be well and, you know, not have any issues with like maybe not being able to, able to participate or, you know, things like that. So it's just important to keep all of those things in mind for sure. Um, you know, and then there will definitely be a lot more information forthcoming. Um, you know, hopefully everybody will find out the, the robot lineup, um, you know, which will be exciting. Obviously mm-hmm. there's a lot of speculation out there on, on Reddit and things like that. There's some speculation, but then there's us supporters, okay, who already have yeah. the inside track, you know? If, so. if, if you, <laughs> if you want to know more things, I would highly recommend being a supporter. It is yeah. $5 a month, well yeah. worth it in my opinion. So please sign up and be a supporter um but some of the things that we can talk about um you know is that greg had detailed a lot of the rule changes now fans of the show may know that i have had john remar on my show not that long ago and he talked about a lot of these things from a proposal perspective because things had not been finalized yet however the rules are now finalized and i am very excited that Crab walking, gone. Yeah. Um, unsticks, gone. An mm-hmm. Engagement, you know, now there is a rule in place that you have to engage. You know, if after a certain time you're not doing that, then the referee can potentially count you down. So a lot of these things that me as a fan uh, that I have wanted to see out of last season is actually coming to fruition, and I could not be more excited. Yeah, I mean, this is really the thing. The continued evolution of of robotic combat and of, of combat and battle bots. I mean, you listen to Greg, and he just wants to do the best he can do for the fans, for the seasons to be better and better all the time. And the rules they started putting in place were meant for that. But then you see that they, they after a while, they started to be kind of counter 
productive or counter entertainative. I just made up a word. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to see what they're going to come back with next year. And he's honest with himself and with everybody. It might end up in a few fights that aren't so exciting anymore, but it should end up in a lot of fights where the destruction continues. I mean, where you see, are they crab walking or not? Well, who, you don't even need to ask anymore. Just keep the fight going. And uh, it's going to be, it, it's it's really great that they listen to the fans. They 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 take they they really take heart and and they, they really take in what happened the past season and they want to make it better. They they're they're honest with themselves about what didn't didn't work every season and they come back every year with an even better you know product if you will. And I was so it was so great to hear Greg just you know very he wasn't there was no there was no show of it at all. He's he's just talking about what he believes in. And he believes in the show and the changes that were that are going to be made for this coming season are going to bring a lot of excitement. I can't wait for it. It's going to be great. Um, it's I, I I'm just I'm I'm sad that I can't be there for the filming myself because I'm a Halloween enthusiast and my job uh, is such that I have to be involved in major Halloween festivities for the entire time leading up to Halloween, which is right when I uh, the Battle Bots is going to be filmed. So I'm, I am I was honestly like kind of getting a little bit misty eyed because I was like, I can't go this year. So I'll be at season eight. And that was another great thing from the interview with Greg is that, I mean, there's like no doubt there's going to be a season eight and a season nine. I mean, like the future of Battle Boss is bright. And um, it's thanks to the fans caring so much. It's thanks to the builders being so dedicated. And, you know, it was really great to hear from uh, Greg was just, also, his acknowledgement of the the fans and the, the content producers like you, Christine, you know, you know, being thankful that there's so much good content being published out there and so much discussion of, of BattleBots. It's just great for the fans to build the fandom. It was it was it was so great to listen to an interview today and just feel like, wow, BattleBots is it's on. Let's let's go. You know, it's great. Yeah, I, I'm really excited that, you know, Discovery has, you know, decided to really believe in something that I have thought has been a worthwhile source of entertainment for a long time. Um, I mean, it's so important for so many of the young people out there that are looking to get in, into doing this type of thing um, to have really great role models and examples and like a, a path to to get into something like this. And I think you know, Greg talked a lot about 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 that too, like the possibility of doing like a juniors battle bots and, you know, like lots of good ideas like that, that I think are going to really take this sport further. Yeah. Um, you know, something that's like just a lot. niche, you know, kind of a niche thing. Yeah. One of the things I was like, you know, I was sitting here like, yeah, it's amazing what they're thinking of here. What they, the reason they're showing it on TBS, if you've noticed that they're saying, oh, it's also going to be on TBS, you know why? Because WWE, they're putting it right after WWE so that when you're already finished watching WWE and you, you will already love that kind of stuff, the next thing that comes on is BattleBots. And you're like, this is amazing too. They, they, It's so smart what they're going to be able to do now with growing the audience of BattleBots. And <clears throat> that, that fact that you know people were like, why the heck am I watching BattleBots on TBS, you guys? That's exactly why. It's because they're, they're, they're putting it right up against WWE. So that fandom gets to enjoy what we've always enjoyed, which is knock down, drag out robot brawls. So I, I'm excited for the future of BattleBots and I just can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's a really natural fit. I mean, yeah. to me, I've always felt like BattleBots is a cross between WWE, Pokemon, and just robots that like yeah. if, if the Pokemon were robots like that's that's kind of what I what I see it as um mm -hmm. and I mean I was it, so many people may not know this about me but I was a huge WWE well back in those days it was WWF fan um uh -huh. growing up in the late 80s early 90s like I watched it <laughs> religiously every week Mm -hmm. um, and even saw it live a few times. So it's it's really not a surprise that I like mm -hmm. BattleBots. <laughs> um, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's very much in that same vein of like, you know, instead of having one person, but having like this whole team with this whole personality and a robot that reflects that. And I just think mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I came from a similar but different direction with my love of this. I used to be a huge UFC fan. And um and I got to tell you, I couldn't stand the human damage anymore. I, I, my heart was just like, oh, I love that fighter. And now he or she is like injured for a year and a half because of that fight. And 
They're going to have CTE, and I don't want to bag on the OC because I still have a spot in my heart for it. Battle bots is all of the violence I crave without the human cost. <laughs> it is, yeah. I love watching this destruction and being like, it's fine. And an electric motor got burned. A lithium battery is gone. But the team is fine. Andrea Galately is not hurt. <laughs> okay, this is good. So I could just, but I do love how they they mesh together so well, WWE and BattleBots. And it's just that kind of knowing that, that BattleBots made the cut through the merger and seeing so many other shows that didn't make it now, knowing now they didn't just make the cut, but they're really invested. And I'm just so excited, Christine. This is going to be, it, it's going to be amazing. And I, I can't wait to see where it goes from here. So I'm glad that you got to have me on the show on such like a, Kind of momentous occasion here with Greg having announced so much this morning and to be able to talk about the championship episode. I'm so thankful that you invited me here. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm trying really hard not to be excited about the fact that I am going to BattleBots um, because I because I know that you're not. But um, I I am definitely excited. Um, you know, I, I will I will probably make some kind of a video totally non-spoilery not including anything that i'm not allowed to say just like talking about what that experience is like for fans that have never been um mm -hmm. because I, I know um mary uh one of the fans in the in the battle bots group had posted like a really really good detailed post about like all of the things to expect going to a taping um which was phenomenal yeah. and so mm -hmm. i i plan to make a video kind of in that similar vein just talking about all of the things that you should know and should expect, um, spoiler free. Once yeah. once I do that, um, but I am I am definitely excited. It will be a unique experience, and um, hopefully that will give me an opportunity to talk to some teams that I haven't, and hopefully have them on the show in the future. Yeah, I'm so jealous. I, I can't believe I'm not going to this season. And I, again, I love my job so much, and my job is to create fun at my schools for my students who are all these international students from around the world. They've never celebrated Halloween before. So, like, my two favorite things in the world are Halloween and BattleBots, and now they overlap, and I'm, oh, so have fun for me. Yes. Uh, and joy. I look forward to the content you'll be able to create. I'm looking forward to all the content you already have ready to go on the show already. in the next few weeks. This is going to be good, and I love what you're doing, and I'm honored to have been invited to be part of your show. Absolutely. Um, right. And for those who are watching the show, uh, you know, as Nick said, I have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Um, there's going to be some some interviews, you know, uh, Monsoon is going to be coming out, uh, that interview, hijinks. Um, I also am going to have an interview with Lisa Winter, specifically just Lisa, to talk about Tentamushi and all of her amazing robots because I could not pass up the opportunity to do so. Um, so if you are excited about that and you want to watch more, please make sure that you like, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff so that we can keep the content rolling through the filming. All right. Thank you very much, Christine. Subscribe, yeah. everybody. Like the show, subscribe, and share it. Give it to everybody. It's a free way to enjoy BattleBots in your spare time. I love it. Absolutely. See you next time on the show. See y'all. Thanks.